Welcome to the Penn Admissions video series. In this series, you will be learning lots and lots and lots of... Wait a sec. Before we go any further, have you heard that quote from Ben Franklin, the founder of Penn? What you seem to be, be really. This quote just about sums up what the admissions process is all about at Penn. We take a look at your whole student self, as seen through four key components. Academics, activities, essays, and interviews. It's something we call a comprehensive whole person review. At its essence, the application is a way for you to introduce yourself to the Penn Admissions Committee. And don't worry, we're not just machines crunching through applications looking for a single factor to define you. We're humans actively reviewing a variety of factors, each considered in context. So here we go, let's get started. And don't forget that as we dig down into the four main components of the application, academics, activities, essays, and interviews, we'll be offering tips and advice for completing those sections. And really, there's no better place to begin with than academics. So let's get started by breaking down how this part of the application will help to answer the question, what kind of student are you? Hang on a second. Academics can seem like an epic part of your application. I mean, you've only been going to school your entire life, right? So let's break down what we mean when we say academics. The three main elements we use in our review process are grades, also known as your transcript, standardized tests, and recommendations. What we mean when we say grades is your transcript, which is your complete academic record. Not just the grades you've earned, but the classes you've taken in the context of your individual high school. In essence, we're trying to answer the question, how do you respond to a challenging curriculum? Also, just a heads up, we know every high school is different, so we will review your school's profile alongside your transcript to understand the types of courses available to you. For example, did you have access to AP, honors, IB, or other types of courses? And let's just back up one second. Do you know what a high school profile is? The profile is created by your high school and provides information about your community, school curriculum, and other academic information like testing averages. We use this document to get a better understanding of your school's particular offerings. We want to figure out what a challenging curriculum looks like at your particular high school and how you've made use of that challenge where appropriate for you. We don't compare your school's offerings to those offered down the street or at a school on the other side of the planet. We use your transcript to form a narrative about what kind of student you are, day in and day out, over the course of your high school career, because your grades are the best indicator of future success in college. Obviously, four years of good grades is very important, including a strong senior year. But an upward trend across those four years is also a great sign and definitely better than a downward trend. This looks different for every student. So again, we work to understand what academic opportunities are offered in your school and how you have pursued those that make sense for you. We also look to your transcript to help explain alignment with your stated academic or professional goals. Let's say you're interested in engineering, but haven't had exposure to physics or you've avoided advanced STEM offerings at your school. This could be an indication that you don't have the academic preparation necessary to succeed in an engineering curriculum. Make sure to think about how your course choices align with future goals. But really, if there are other things you'd like to explain or put in context about your transcript, an aberrant bad grade, classes you weren't able to take, scheduling conflicts, etc., be sure to use the additional information section of the application to tell us those things. Because remember, we are real people reading your application. So if you don't tell us, we may not ever know. Next up is how we review standardized tests. We know that this year many students may not be able to take these exams for a variety of reasons. That's why we've changed our testing policy to recognize and acknowledge the challenges to the college application process caused by COVID-19. Penn will not require applicants to submit the SAT, ACT, or SAT subject test for the 2020-2021 application cycle. Applicants who do not submit standardized test scores will not be at a disadvantage in the admissions process. That said, applicants still have the option of self-reporting their test scores, if they have them. Keep in mind, these tests have always been just one factor among many that we use in our evaluation process. This is why choosing not to include test results is perfectly fine too. And finally, if you are a non-native speaker of English and if you attend a non-English medium school, then we ask that you submit results from the TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo English test. And that just about wraps up our segment about academics and the application process. But before we go, may I make a recommendation? Don't forget to get recommendations. 
What I mean is, make sure you get recommendation letters from two teachers and your school counselor, if available. Don't worry, though. If your school counselor isn't able to write a letter on your behalf, we'll rely on your other recommenders instead. And we also allow for one supplemental recommendation. Maybe this is from a job supervisor, a club advisor, or a coach. Your teachers give us a personal view of you as a student in their class and tell us new or additional information that can't always be assessed from grades and scores. They help us to imagine what kind of student, roommate, lab mate, teammate, and friend you might be in the Penn community. Many of your teachers know you really well and we value their perspective and voice. Letters also help us to understand the story behind the grades on your transcript by describing your work ethic, class participation, and collaboration with your peers. And because of that, consider the following advice when selecting recommenders. The best letters come from teachers who know you well, not necessarily those who gave you the best grade. Ideally, pick one or two teachers from your junior or senior year in major subjects. Getting a letter from a teacher you had early on may not help us understand your evolution as much as a letter from a teacher who you worked with more recently. We don't recommend you submit letters from instructors of the same subjects so that we can gain insight into your work in different disciplines. Think about how the person you ask can complement the rest of your application. Will they provide knowledge that we can't learn elsewhere? Think about this example. If you're interested in literature, it may benefit you to have an English teacher write one of your recs, as opposed to two science teachers, right? So now you know why we ask for recommendation letters. But how should you go about getting one? Well, for starters, be sure to ask your teachers for recommendations well in advance of the application deadline, at least a few weeks, and ideally, a few months. And it's always a good idea to provide your teachers with a list of projects and assignments you did in their class, or a favorite topic that was discussed, or what you most enjoyed from their class. We don't expect the teacher to discuss your entire resume, but rather to speak about those activities in which they engaged with you. And finally, here is a tip for the ages. Be sure to follow up with a thank you note. So that about wraps it up. That's how we at Penn Admissions get to know what kind of student you are, as well as the story behind your grades by reviewing your transcripts, standardized test results, and your letters of recommendation. Together in context with what you're interested in studying, we begin to understand who you are as a student and what you hope to gain from attending a place like Penn. But wait, there's more to your application than just academics. Let's take a closer look at all things related to activities and break down the parts of the application that help answer the question, what do you do outside of class? Hey, hey you. You like to do things outside the classroom every once in a while, right? You like to get out, stretch your legs and your mind, and not think about tomorrow's course load or tonight's homework, right? Of course you do. Well, the reason why colleges ask you to share what you do when you're not in class is that these activities give additional insight into who you are as a whole person, not just as a student. For starters, there are two main types of activities, things that you choose to do and other responsibilities. The kind of activities you've chosen to do give an admissions committee a glimpse into what you enjoy, or at least they should. Do you read poetry at open mic nights in your free time? Do you make sets for a theater company? Or maybe run a really fast mile? Sharing what you choose to do in your free time showcases aspects of your personality and specific skills or talents that you may have. It also tells us how and what you may contribute to our community. We also want to know about your other responsibilities, which can be just as important. Some examples of this could include working at a part-time job, caring for a family member on a daily basis, or having a long commute to school. Okay, so now we want to share a few tips about completing the activities section of the application. The first and most important tips we have, relax, be yourself, really. What was that you said, Ben? What you seem to be, be really? Exactly. We're not looking for a predetermined list of activities. Some people love music, others debate, or sports. But if you have a choice, please do those things you enjoy and help you grow as a person. Don't do things because others are doing them, or it won't ring true when admissions committees are looking at your entire application. Next, be explicit. <clears throat> what I meant was, don't assume we know what your activities actually entail, because even if they seem self-explanatory, they can vary from school to school. Tell us the amount of time you spend in each activity. This helps us understand the depth of your involvement and impact and include specific responsibilities for each activity. Did you hold a leadership position? What kind of contributions did you make with the positions that you held? For example, look at what band means in these two versions. You could simply tell us you play clarinet, 
or you could inform us you were the drum major of the marching band responsible for an 80-plus member band and played clarinet for all four years of high school. And also, don't forget to take time to spell out acronyms so that someone who doesn't go to your school can understand what you mean. Okay, so in summary, being concise, but including some detail about your activities will help us better understand how you're spending time outside of class. And how you spend your time outside of the classroom is part of your personal story. We care about your personal story because, at its heart, the admissions process is all about building a community. And that's why we ask you about activities. And speaking of your personal story, one of the best ways for us to learn more about you is through your essays. Your pen application requires a personal essay, sometimes called the personal statement, and two supplemental pen-specific essays, and sometimes a third essay, depending on the academic program to which you're applying. Before we go any further, you may be asking yourself, why does pen require all of these essays? First off, essays show us your writing style and how effectively you communicate an idea. They also allow us to get to know you in a way that we might not otherwise from other parts of the application and they give us additional context about you as a whole person. So now, let's dig down a bit more. Your personal essay is a vehicle for your voice. Tell us a story. Choose a topic that helps us to know you better and helps us understand what you will bring to the Penn community. Think about it like this. Your grades, scores, and recommendations are out of your hands by the time you apply, but you have complete control over your essays. What do you want to say to an admissions committee that you feel represents what you care about, believe in, or that has shaped you? Keep in mind that this essay will be sent to all the schools to which you've applied. So take the time to brainstorm potential topics. Give yourself plenty of time to write and ask a trusted friend, mentor, parent, or teacher to read it and give you their feedback. But here's an important tip. Don't let others change the purpose and meaning behind what you want to say. It's not a good essay if we can't hear your unique voice. Don't try to be someone that you're not. Your essay will be much more successful if you write about something you truly know, and no one knows you better than you. Honestly, if it's true to you, it will be a successful piece of writing. Okay, so in addition to the personal essay, most selective schools will require supplemental essays. We have two additional essays for Penn this year. For these essays, we are looking to understand what makes you specifically interested in Penn. The first essay asks, how did you discover your intellectual and academic interests, and how will you explore them on campus? And at Penn, learning and growth happen outside the classroom too. So the second essay asks, how will you explore the community at Penn? Pro tip, be sure to read and fully answer the question. Schools often signal what's important to them by the questions they ask. Make use of resources when demonstrating your knowledge of a campus community. If you didn't visit campus, no problem. You can learn a lot about a school from its website and other online tools. And if you do visit a school's website, make sure you get beyond the home page. Academic departments, campus support services, student life, and more all have web pages with a lot to offer if you spend some time doing thoughtful research online. And if you don't know where to start when working on your pen essays, take a look at some student journeys we've profiled on our website, where you'll be introduced to over 30 current and recently graduated students who are more than excited to tell you about the ways they engaged on campus. These stories can be a great starting point and will hopefully ignite some inspiration in thinking about how you will explore your academic and extracurricular interests here at Penn. Finally, be sure to read and proofread these essays before sending them off. Spell check can be helpful, but your own eyes are even better. You want to make sure you're submitting your best work. Okay, we know that was a lot of info, but if you remember one thing, we promise you will write more effective essays. Remember that the essays are your way to tell an admissions committee what you want them to know about you in your own words. You have the power. Is it time for another Ben Franklin quote yet? Because this one is so on point. Either write something worth reading or do something worth writing. All right, you're almost there. Now let's look at one of the more unique parts of the application process and break down how interviews help to answer the question, what else do you want us to know about you? The interview is another opportunity for us to get to know you better. It's a chance to talk about yourself, your interests and experiences, and tell us more about why you've applied to Penn. It's also a chance for you to learn more about Penn from your interviewer. And speaking of which, our interviews are offered through the Penn Alumni Interview Program, a volunteer program comprised of thousands of alums across the country and around the world who are very excited to interview prospective students. 
Think of the interview as a two-way exchange between you and your alumni volunteer. It's a conversation, nothing to be nervous about. It's an additional opportunity for Penn to learn a little bit more about you and for you to learn a little more about Penn. At Penn, interviews occur after you've applied, so you don't need to request one. They are assigned by the Alumni Interview Program, and typically more than 90% of applicants are offered an interview, depending on volunteer availability. Interview assignments have no correlation to the strength of your application, so don't worry if you are not invited to interview. Just to be clear, interviews are not required as part of our process. But if you are offered an interview, we strongly encourage you to make time for the opportunity. You'll know because the alumni interviewer will reach out to you after you've submitted your application. We also suggest that you do some homework beforehand to prepare yourself for a successful interview. What kind of homework, you ask? Well, start thinking of some questions that your interviewer might ask. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? What's important to you? What are your current academic or extracurricular interests? Why did you apply to Penn? And practice your answers to these questions. Yes, really practice your answers out loud so you can get comfortable talking about yourself before your interview. Own your accomplishments. You have a lot to be proud of. And don't worry about bringing anything other than yourself to your interview. And your interests, personal story, and questions, of course. At the same time, try to think about what questions you might want to ask your interviewer, in addition to thinking about what questions you haven't already had answered. Can you tell me your favorite thing about Penn? How did your time at Penn help you get where you are today? It's okay to write down your questions and bring them with you if it makes you more comfortable. Also, in case you're wondering, interviews may happen in person or virtually via video chat or phone. Penn views all formats equally. We think the conversation is the important part. And you don't need to dress formally for the interview. Wear what you would wear for a school photograph or a presentation in class. Be comfortable and let your personal style show through so you can focus on the interview, not what you're wearing. And lastly, if your interview is at a coffee shop or cafe, please know you are not obliged to buy anything. After your interview, your alumni interviewer will submit a summary of your discussion to the admissions committee, which will be added to your application, so that we can learn more about you that way too. And don't forget to send a quick thank you note to your alumni interviewer. We hope this helps you to see the interview as one more opportunity to share something more about yourself. All right, you did it, that's it. Through your academics, activities, essays, and interviews together, we get a comprehensive understanding of you as a whole person and an idea about why you want to attend a place like Penn. And don't forget, you can use this knowledge whether or not you ultimately apply to Penn. We think it's useful and hope that you will too.